The landing platform dock design of the South Korean company Daesan Shipbuilding, commonly known as the Makassar class, is the best-selling amphibious assault ship of its kind. Five nations have already chosen it, and two more are also candidates. As the weapon detective, we're now investigating the Makassar class and the factors behind this success. The Makassar class landing platform dock, or LPD, consists of eight subclasses. The vessel has been reconfigured to meet the specific requirements of the user nation. Only the Indonesian Navy operates four subclasses, which slightly differ from one another. Indonesia, Myanmar, Peru, the Philippines and the United Arab Emirates have already chosen the ship. Brazil and Malaysia are the closest nations poised to become the future operators of the vessel. The story of this amphibious assault ship dates back to the early 2000s when Indonesia decided to acquire an LPD. The Daesan Shipbuilding, a South Korean company primarily known for its civilian shipbuilding projects, won the tender. Based on the company's car ferry designs, Kerai Tanjun Dalpeli was laid down in 2002. However, the Indonesian Navy redesignated her as a multi purpose hospital ship after her launch. Commissioned in 2003, the vessel features a wild deck and can carry two medium-sized helicopters. On August 1, 2007, Indonesia redesignated the ship as a hospital ship, removed its armament and changed their name to KRI Dr. Suharso. The new Makassar class LPD was designed based on this vessel. Indonesia ordered four Makassar class ships in 2005. While the subsequent seven vessels are essentially of this class, they are categorized into four subclasses due to certain modifications. Therefore, only the first two built in South Korea are designated as the Makassar class. KRI Makassar, the first of its class, was laid down in 2005, launched on December 7, 2006 and commissioned on April 29, 2007. The second LPD, KRI Surabaya, also joined the fleet in 2007. KRI Makassar has a 40mm single barrel SAK 40 L70315. With its stealthy turret, this gun has a rate of fire of 200 rounds per minute and an effective range of 4000 meters. We couldn't find any visual of the KRI Surabaya with a bow gun. Each of these ships can also be equipped with two 20mm Dianel Vector GA1 guns and two Simbad launchers, which are mounted based on the mission requirements. The 20mm Vector GA-1 gun has a rate of fire of 750 rounds per minute. The manually operated twin-tube Simbad launches the Misral missile with a range of 6000 meters and a maximum speed exceeding Mach 2.6. It features infrared passive homing with a digital seeker and its effective altitude is 3000 meters. The Makassar class is also armed with two 12.7mm machine guns. It can transport up to 35 infantry vehicles and 354 troops. Like other subclasses, the Makassar class features an aft well deck suitable for operating up to two landing craft utility type vessels, assault craft, amphibious vehicles or hovercrafts. It also carries personnel type landing craft alongside rubber boats. The ship boasts aviation facilities for three helicopters including a helipad with two spots and a hangar. The Indonesian Navy operates medium-sized AS-332 Super Puma or Light Bell 412, Mi-2, AS-565 Panther or NBO-105 helicopters on the Makassar class. Equipped with a bow thruster for better maneuverability, the LPD has an endurance of 45 days. The complement of the Makassar class is 126 people. The ship has a length of 122 meters a beam of 22 meters and a drought of 4.9 meters. Its standard displacement is 11,300 tons, while its fully loaded displacement is 15,994 tons. The combined diesel and diesel configuration propulsion system comprises two 2,625 horsepower MAN BW8L2832A 32 diesel engines. The top speed of the Makassar class is 23 knots. The range is 18,520 kilometers 
In other words, 10,000 nautical miles at an economical speed of 12 knots. The two follow-on ships, defined as the Bengar Masin class, were built in Indonesia with assistance from Desan shipyards. The first ship of its class, Kerai Bengar Masin, was laid down on October 19, 2006, launched on August 28, 2008, and commissioned on November 28, 2009. The second ship, Kerai Banda Aceh, joined the fleet two years later. The locations where they were constructed are not the only difference between the Makassar and Bangar Masin classes. Unlike its predecessor, the latter includes provisions for a command and control system, enabling it to function as a flagship. Its superstructure is designed with an angle to reduce the radar cross-section. The Bangar Masin class also has a length of 125 meters, not 122 meters, and can accommodate five helicopters instead of three. The Indonesian Navy initially intended to equip the ship with a 57mm gun, but abandoned the plan in favor of the 40mm single barrel SAK 40 L70 315 with an open turret. The other armament features of the Bangar Masin class are the same as those of the Makassar class. The only LPD of the follow on Samaran subclass, Kerai Samaran, was laid down on August 28, 2017 launched on August 3rd, 2018 and commissioned on January 21, 2019. She was constructed in Indonesia and temporarily functioned as a hospital ship until the Sudira Husoro class hospital ships were commissioned. Unlike the Makassar class, Kare Samaran has a fully loaded displacement of 11,583 tons, a length of 123 meters, a beam of 21.8 meters and a drought of 5 meters. Its combined diesel and diesel propulsion system comprises two 3,915 horsepower MAN STX 8L2738 diesel engines. The ship can travel 17,335 kilometers without replenishment. Its complement is 121 people and it can carry up to 500 troops along with associated vehicles and equipment. Kerai Smarand can accommodate and operate up to three helicopters. Its armament features are the same as those of the Makassar class, except the bow gun. The final subclass is the Sudura Husoto class, which is a hospital ship rather than an LPD. The first of the class, KRA Dr. Wahidin Sudura Husoto, was laid down on October 14, 2019, launched on January 7, 2021, and commissioned on January 14, 2022. KRA Dr. Rajiman Vedyo Diningrat joined the fleet in 2023. The unarmed Sudiro Husoro class vessel measures 124 meters in length and 21.8 meters in beam and lacks a well deck. It can accommodate 643 people, including 159 patients. In 2009, the Philippines considered acquiring a converted Roro vessel under the strategic sea lift vessel program. The project later evolved into an LPD and after a competitive bidding, the Navy selected the Makassar class in 2013. One year later, the Philippines ordered two vessels designated as the Tarlac class, which would be built in Indonesia. The first ship of the class, BRP Tarlac, was laid down on January 22, 2015, launched on January 18, 2016, and commissioned on June 1, 2016. The second LPD, BRP Dawa del Sur joined the fleet in 2017. As of 2025, two additional vessels ordered in 2022 are currently under construction. The new ships will possess superior seakeeping capabilities compared to the previous two. The Tarlac class has the same propulsion system and dimensions as the Samaran class except for its length of 123 meters. The Philippine Navy initially intended to equip each LPD with one 76mm and two 25mm guns. However, the Tarlac class currently has six 12.7mm machine guns as its armament. The Philippine deploys AW109E power helicopters on the vessel. In 2012, Peru signed an agreement with Desan Shipbuilding to acquire two LPDs based on the Makassar class to replace its Terrabon Parish class tank landing ships. The state-owned shipyard SIMA would construct vessels, which were defined as the Pisco class with assistance from South Korean company. The first ship of the class, BAP Pisco, was laid down on July 12, 2013, 
launched on April 25, 2017 and commissioned on June 6, 2018. The second, BAP Paita was launched on December 9, 2022, marking the day it joined the fleet. The general characteristics of the Pisco class are similar to those of the Makassar class except for their armaments and helicopters. Each Peruvian LPD has one 40mm twin barrel Dardagan, two 30mm single barrel Sentinel 30 and four 12.7mm single barrel Sentinel 2.0 remotely controlled weapon station. The Pisco class has a Dardogan which can fire 300 rounds per minute per barrel and has a range of 4 km. The Sentinel-30 can fire 200 rounds per minute and has a range of 3 km. The Peruvian Navy deploys either two AB-412SP, SH-3 Sea King or three SH-2G Super Sea Sprite helicopters on its Pisco-class ships. Myanmar ordered one LPD designated as the Multumoa class in 2018. The first and only ship of its class built in South Korea, UMS Multumoa, was launched in July 2019 and commissioned on December 24, 2019. She is equipped with the same propulsion system as the Makassar class, but has a fully loaded displacement of 15,900 tons, a length of 125 meters and a drought of 5 meters. UMS Multima is equipped with 14.5mm machine guns, some of which are of the Gatling type. The 14.5mm machine gun has a theoretical rate of fire of 600 rounds per minute for a single barrel, an effective range of 2000 meters and an effective altitude of 1400 meters. The Myanmar Navy deploys MI-17 or AS-365 Dofa helicopters on the ship which can carry three rotor craft. Currently Indonesia is constructing a 163 meter long version of the Makassar class for the United Arab Emirates Navy. Ordered in 2023, the LPD was laid down on April 24, 2024. All operators of the Makassar class and its subclasses have deployed their ships for critical humanitarian missions, exercises and international port visits. Only the Philippine Navy utilized its LPDs in combat. In 2017, during the five-month siege of Marawi against Salafi Jihadist group in Mindanao, BRP Tarlac served as a floating base for AW-109s and the Naval Special Warfare Group's attack crafts. She also delivered the Philippine Army's M113s to Iligan City. Let's begin our analysis. Why has the Makassar class become the best-selling amphibious assault ship of the 21st century? The first reason is undoubtedly economic. Indonesia paid only $150 million to Desan shipyards for four LPDs which allowed for the construction of two ships abroad and the necessary technology transfer to build another two locally. Then success in exports followed and the country also made money. Similarly, Peru paid just $60 million. The country is currently negotiating with Brazil to sell a Pisco-class vessel for $170 million in exchange for two second-hand Type 209-class submarines. Doing business with Desan shipyards not only appears beneficial for low costs, but also profitable. If executed with US or European companies, such projects could have cost billions and resulted in millions of restrictions on technology transfer and export. The 1982 Falklands War once more highlighted the air threats posed to landing task forces. Since then, during such operations, modern navies have prioritized utilizing helicopters from long distances to mitigate this danger. This change has increased the popularity of landing helicopter dock and landing helicopter assault type vessels, pushing LPD into the background. However, many countries do not intend to conduct a large-scale naval invasion against another nation. They only require an amphibious assault ship as a floating base to control distant islands as deploying a garrison on each one is too expensive. LPDs are also highly beneficial as mobile civil services such as healthcare delivery, transportation, disaster relief and more. Some other nations are just seeking a slightly more capable amphibious assault ship to replace their aging tank landing ships. Acquiring a Mistral or Juan Carlos One landing helicopter dock for this requirement would be excessively costly. The Makassar class provides sufficient capability at an appealing low cost. It does not impose arbitrary restrictions on technology transfers and export rights. 
Therefore, its success is not surprising. The market success of this amphibious assault ship seems to be just the beginning. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.